Welcome back to part two. I'll just wait while Terry uh, clicks on his thing. At least he ain't got a picture of Carl Froch, but I can hardly see it. It's a really small picture on his profile. So, there is he. We'll be clicking on in a sec. Here we have a side text here. Jeff Hines, he's, he's got some news in the next two weeks regarding border control. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, cheers for that, mate. See where Terry is. Where are you, Terry? Oh, is it because I've pressed record? What have I got him in as? Oh, hang on. I know what I've got him in as. <laughs> the judge. <laughs> Terry, where are you? I've pressed record here. You're not on. I'll keep it going, Miss Angela. What can you do? Let's have a look. Terry, don't think that Parker and Joyce is a good fight, personally. I think it's a decent fight. I'd like to see Joe Joyce active. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see Joe Joyce active. I mean, he's undefeated, isn't he, Joe Joyce? I mean, has he had a bit of bad luck? I know he's a big dummy and that, like, but he's undefeated, isn't he? British Commonwealth European, he's mandatory for heavyweight title. He won Olympic silver, but it could easily be gold. Where are you, lad? So, yeah, it's all good, isn't it? All good. But uh, I don't know what to make of that Joseph Parker, though. I had to go about the business in the last couple of months. I don't know. Uh, he needs to remember that he's in England now. He's not in New Zealand. You're over here. So don't be shooting your mouth off just because you've got New Zealand telly. You know what I mean? Stinkinator. But to be fair, the Parker in his last fight, you know, he uh, he looked good with Andy Lee, so I might be able to get... I've already pressed record. I'm just going on about Joseph Parker. I thought he looked good hey. last time out, Terry. Did you? You want me? Welcome to part two. Did you enjoy Joseph Parker's last fight, Terry? No. I don't enjoy any Joseph Parker fights. I don't, but I did the last one with Andy Lee when I thought he looked better. Didn't you think that? <laughs> He's fighting a granddad. Let's let's uh, see Parker in there with someone like a um someone like a Hergovich. Or a Joyce. More Hergovich, because Hergovich has got some mileage left. Joe, Joe's in a rush to get somewhere, so I can see why. But for me, I think Joe's ready for an Usyk and Joshua Fury. That's how I feel. Okay. Uh, you know, Anthony Joshua, people keep emailing me saying it in his proper name. Is that true? Uh, no, 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 no. Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm hearing. People keep saying it's, it's not his proper name. His name is Ola Femi, Ola, Walla, 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 Walla. I don't know. I can't read it. He's, he's double. No, isn't it just, isn't it just Anthony? Olua Femi, Olua Sanya, Joshua. Oh, it's so, awesome. Oh, so, yeah, but uh, why would he have a name that we can hardly pronounce as two middle names and then two names that we can easily pronounce? Well, he's Nigerian, Russ. That's why. Oh, is that where he was born? Uh, was he, born? he might have been born here, but his old man was definitely born in Nigeria. Oh, so that's how they do it. So, yeah, but you wouldn't be calling him Ampen if he's from Nigeria, would you? Why not? But, okay, no, so, actually... Let's clarify this. If you go to Watford and yeah. you talk to anyone that knew him who's about his age, they know him as Femi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so his name coming up was Femi. What happened was once they realized what they had, like, can you imagine Mike Costello trying to go Olua Femi all the time? No, you can't, right? So you're going to end up with just a, a name that people can kind of embrace. Do you remember when Fury beat Vladimir and then he went into Wilderness? Yeah. And uh, about 15 months after that, or maybe, maybe a year. Now I think I've got a photo in here. There's one the photo, it's on my stairs. I think it was about my, round about my birth. No, it wouldn't have been, it would have been after because I was slimmer. It might have been 2017 at the beginning. I remember he rung Tyson Fury 
and Tyson Fury, he went Tyson and told us he's wrong. He went Tyson says it's fem. He goes, who is it? He goes, it's Femi. Tyson goes, what do you want, Femi? And I remember back then I was a bit naive. I was, who's Femi? He goes, oh, Joshua in it. That's what he calls his son. He rung him up on a private number and said, it's Femi. It Femi. Tyson straight away. Where are you now? I'll come down and punch holes in your bare knuckle straight away. Oh, no, 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 hold on. No, 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 no. Didn't Joshua ring him up because Fury was talking shit about him? He said, who are you talking shit about? And he said something like... Oh, well, that might have been another time, but this time there were me, yeah. Frank Smith, my mate Frank and Berry, Robin Reed sat there, Savannah, a couple of other kids. I'm trying to think who are, a young Asian kid who were up there. And Tyson were there, Tommy. And Tyson were telling us how he'd rung. He says, you rung me. I said, when are you going to fight him? He said, I don't know. So you won't fight me. He says, you rung me. And I think it might have been over that, over something that was said. And Tyson said he, he, uh, it were a private number, so he, he answered it. it. was, who's that? And he goes, he goes, it, Femi. And he goes, what do you fucking want, Femi? Where are you now? I'll come and punch you up. Let's do it. And how we know what Tyson's like. Yeah. I don't but know. No, what the, was. I, there was one call where it was quite serious, and Joshua was like, you need to stop talking shit about me. You don't know who I know. And then Fury was like, who do you know, man? I'll have a hundred travelers down wherever yeah. you are right now. Yeah, yeah, I know what you, I know what you, yeah, and I can't tell the rest of the story on that, but I know what you're on about. Right. And he, he he mentioned some people, and you know what I'm going to be saying now, don't you? And, and he went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and he mentioned some people from Essex, and he went, no problem, and and let's just say they fucking shit the sense, didn't they? And then what happened after that, didn't they get the dates on Sky? They got a Sky date, didn't they? Uh, but didn't want no, 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 no. Oh, that after that? That was after. That's that some ongoing behind the scenes chat. Yeah, but, but every that time, on... I, tell you, I know you were like Joshua, but every time Tyson said, Where are you now? Let's meet. So you have to give him credit, don't you? No. Why? Because I can say that. Like, like Porky, Porky, I'll give you an example, right? You could ring me. Yeah, listen, I'm in Donny. Where are you? And I'll be like, Mate, I'm in Cornwall. I'll come down and be like, I'll come down. You know what I mean? Until it's real, yeah. it's not real. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Because, look, Fury could easily just show up in Jeddah and walk in that ring and go, what's going on? Who's going to stop him? No one. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if he goes to Jeddah. If Fury goes to Jeddah, you know this is serious. Yeah, that's, this is what I've been thinking last couple of days. Yeah, if he's there next week, because he'll want to yeah. mess about him more. He'll start piping up next week, won't he? I would love it if Fury and Wilder are texting each other now, like, should we just go to Jeddah? Or if Fury and Wilder turned up at Jeddah and tell them why, with begging balls out, I'd love it. Yeah, um, we're just out there like, all right, what's happening here? Literally, everyone just stood in that ring, what's happening here? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, they've got to fight, though, aren't they, them, aren't they? Fury and Joshua. They've got a fight, haven't they, man? And if they do, it'll be 40 quid, won't it, do you reckon? That'd be 60, mate. You're paying 60 on design. We're talking stack cards, aren't they, I'm hearing now? That it's going to be a stack card and, and nope. an event. Isaac Lowe will be on there. Aren't the events at the moment? They're supposed to be events at the moment. No, it's going to be a special event, apparently, I'm hearing. It's going to be Isaac Lowe on there. You're going to get Ramler Ali. You're going to get, I don't even know, um, Campbell oh, Hatton will be on there. Campbell Atten, do you reckon? Yeah, that's what you're going to get. Like, if, if Fury and Joshua fight, that undercard is going to be so weak. I promise you. Because they don't like to share any at Luke, do they? Yeah, they're like, why are we paying these? No, we ain't paying no one, apart from Isaac Lowe. Hey, look what Carl Frotch were paying them and George Groves. They both agreed that the card had to be strong. Hey, go, and you you mentioned this before. Go look at that card. Frotch Groves, Wembley, undercard, and go look at, nah, it's day, day and night, isn't it? Yeah. That undercard had James DeGay, a lot on, didn't it? It was, it was strong. And it made you want to watch the whole thing. The whole show, yeah. And we've lost that now, haven't we, with pay-per-views a little bit. We, people are just going into arena late, aren't they? Well, it's, 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 like, it's, like, the, it's like the street game, man. We're just, we're just cutting the product down to the minimum viable dose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're not doing blue magic anymore, Porky. No, oh, Blue Magic. What, Frank uh, Lucas? <laughs> yeah. No, you know, Frank Lucas has not made money in that film. Do you know what made money is? Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr. 
Where Frank Nicky Barnes. Nicky Barnes goes around to see him about him cutting gear up. And he says, what? My gear? <laughs> but I, I agree that you shouldn't mess with drugs. If you're going to take them, take them, don't cut them. Because you don't know what you're putting yeah. in cutting agents. The secret is, if you're a drug dealer, to get them on it. So why cut it? They're all thick. They're not businessmen nowadays, are they? You'll go ask for some cocaine in Doncaster. Now they go, oh, do you want the weak version or the strong? I'm going to go, what? You mean you do a weak version? Get the hell out of it. That means strong's messed about with as well. Get gone. Yeah. You know, well, do you want a 50 quid gram or an 80? What? I've never heard of so stupid in all my life. But what is this now around here? Next gen. Jesus, they don't know what they're fucking doing. Uh, that's another video I'm not getting paid for for swearing. That's why I'm skinned. <laughs> uh, Triple D against the crocodile. Don King. He's always there, isn't he, Don? Age 91. He's still setting about people for money. I love that. That makes me happy. You know, I like, I like that. Don a bit tough, Terry. Come on, that's a bit strong, isn't it? No, nah, man. Don King came out of the woodwork, knew that he could tap up Frank Warren. I mean, wins the purse bid. God knows how he won that purse bid with what money. Everyone's greedy for the money, so they take the fight. No one asked for the money to be guaranteed. I'm like, you're dealing with Don King. Like, why wouldn't you ask for the money to be guaranteed? Mm. I would have. It's uh, it's a, it's it. I can explain it now. When John King won that purse bid, the first thing I said on my channel, and if you go look, it's there. I said, you know, Don King, nobody's going to get paid. That's the first thing embedded in my head because he's had that many cases. Obviously, I know the Tim Witherspoon case. I know that off by heart because he was Dennis's dad's best mate. He lived in Dennis's dad's house. Tim Witherspoon. He worked. At, he worked at Oldham Ferry Golf Club in Doncaster as a host. That's how, he, that's how bad it was for him. Man. A bit like uh, Joe Lewis, wasn't it? He ended up uh, an host at Vegas, didn't he? That's what happens to ex-heavyweight world champions because they get the money took, don't they? But he stood up to King, didn't he, Tim Witherspoon? And got, yeah, paid, yeah, got settled for a million out of court, didn't he? He stood up to him. So I have got a little bit of respect for him, but he can't talk about Don King to stroke Dennis's dad for 50 and nobody's seen him since. You know what I mean? We, where's my 50 bags? But this is what I say to people about. But this is what I say to people about boxing. Shit, how he is. Aren't you telling? Everyone, everyone worries about oh, so they didn't get paid. But there are so many people in boxing that don't get paid. Trainers that don't get paid. Cutmen that don't get paid. Managers that don't get paid. Loads of people yeah. do not get paid in boxing. You know what? I, do you know what it needs? Right? I know a trainer. I'm not going to mention his name, and you know what I'm on about. And, and, and he's doing. He's training pros now, and uh, his his fighter didn't get paid off significantly for some sparring. And, and and you know what? You know, when you go do a job for something in life, and you say, oh, I've done that, I fitted your kitchen or painted your house, you, you pay them, don't you? What, what's different? If you're sparring for something, you pay them, don't you? You get knocked about, pay the man. If you don't pay people in boxing, you shit houses. But why aren't people going around and just completely smashing these people to smithereens and setting about them? Because it's going to get to that stage soon. People need to be set about. I want to see fingers severed off, ears cut off, noses bit off. I want good hidings handed out in boxing, Terry. That's what I want to see. God help him. So, all, all we're going to see now in, in every gym in the country is someone in a cap, a leather coat, and a tracksuit. Come around, corner. <laughs> Fuck off. I don't wear a cap, huh? I'm actually wearing a cap. I put that leather jacket on, on, on top of my tracky because I was frozen in Max's fucking car, mate. But after I thought, fucking hell, leather. Even, even the kids were like, Dad, tracky, tracky, a tracksuit and a leather coat. I'm like, yeah, I'm a transfer. <laughs> I've never wore a cap, Terry, so you didn't say that. <laughs> I said a cap. You had a cap on. Oh, the cap. Did I have a cap on? Yeah, I always wear a cap than I have sometimes. Keep sun off my head. But now he's back on scene, isn't he, Emperor Michael? Hey, decent kid, you know. Yeah, he'd have done me one in a fair fate. He'd have knocked me out, wouldn't he? No, nah, I don't know, Russ. Like, I've, I have faith in you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to be able to do much now. As I've got my CS gas in my hand. Hey, Terry, if they give me six months to live next Friday, I'll be on news at 10 lane in a few months. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll be going through my list, won't I? <laughs> hey, you'll, be, you, you, you'll be found in Essex. Yeah, I'll be found in Essex. Kid. Yeah, you know that, don't you? Let me car in, in, in Inviting boxing promoters down to a field in Rettenden. 
Yeah. Uh, Beefy Smith, where's he heading now? Retirement. Yeah, he's like, he's, do you reckon? I just, I don't. You look at Liam Smith. He gets smashed by Tony Harrison. He gets smashed by um, Jamel Charlo. He gets smashed by Lara if Lara can get down to that way. Would, would Kel Brook beat him? Uh, hard to tell. Amir Khan wasn't really a fair test. I don't know. I think Beefy's sustained less damage, so probably not. But Beefy's in this no man's land where there's no one of his generation we want him to see, and I think that most of these young guys would smoke him anyway. What about Kit Eubank against Beefy? That's a good fight at 160, isn't it? Nah. Well, think maybe that's... it is. No, no, actually, no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. I'll watch that. Uh, Jack Cattrall to boxer. What do you think on that, Terry? Well, so I, I tweeted about this as well. That like this slow rehabilitation of Pro Bellum back into the mainstream boxing is really interesting, and it's a sign that whatever noise there was in March this year is done now. Boxing just wants to move on, and yeah. so you'll see a lot of these familiar faces back on your screens very soon. And I'm look, I'm neither here nor there on it anymore because. If they wanted to end the whole situation, they could have ended it whenever they wanted. The fact is that a lot of these people will be part of boxing for a long time. We just have to get used to it. And we're just going to see the slow rehabilitation of all these guys. And then you'll get the McCormack brothers on TV soon. And then once that happens, ah, all bets are off. Okay. You know the MTK situation? Now, obviously, it's gone now. and It's been quiet for you know, five months, hasn't it? Uh, <laughs> there's been no arrests. It seems to have gone away. Do you think that it will MTK were good for boxing because everybody got paid and it gave it a cash injection this last 10 years, hasn't it? Yep, they put money in the sport. They gave dates to fighters. Look at how people are struggling now to box. So like once MTK when a lot of people knew they had to retire. Yeah. So 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 there's a lot so, retired, aren't there? There's a lot retired. Yeah. So MTK, good for boxing. Now that doesn't mean we're saying they're good for society, by the way. We're just saying they were good for boxing. Yeah, they were good for boxing. Yeah, not good for society. That's true. Drugs are for mugs, and boozers are cruisers. <laughs> Somebody who I used to know uh, used to say that. Right, uh, Sandy Ryan. What do you think to her, and where do you think she can win a world title, Terry? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I don't know if she can win one at 140, though, because, like, I've met Sandy Ryan, and she's big. Like, Sandy Ryan's, yeah. she's big, physically big. So when I saw on the scales on Friday, I was like, oh, that's not your, that's not a size that you're comfortable with. I think at Welter, she could do a lot of damage, but the problem at Welter is there's no one of interest, really. So she's got to stay at 140 and, and have these scraps with Callie Reese. Uh, Chantal Cameron, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then maybe find a Jessica McCaskill fight later on. Yeah, but I like Sandy. Think, think about this. She lost, went straight back in for the rematch. Didn't need a tune up, like like a lot of male boxers do. Didn't need a tune up. Didn't need any of this. Didn't need any of that. Just say I'm going to fix what went wrong. Come back. She did. Yeah. So I spoke to Clifton after the first fight with uh, whatever the ladies called. And he broke down what went wrong in that camp. And, you know, in very simple terms, Sandy had a short time to lose a lot of weight for that fight. And it showed in, in the fight. I think she's now understood the point I made earlier. You've got to obsess about the small things. Right? Like, all fight night is, is a reflection of everything you did right. And sometimes everything you did wrong. So you just oh. make sure there's not much of the things you did wrong. You know, Clifton Mitchell, he, he talks a lot of sense in me now. It's good, man. Like, I think since since the Sky deal, like in the last year, I've just been lucky enough to get a good few hours talking to Clifton, and because he boxed, he boxed someone I knew when they were amateurs so back in the day. Talking. I think at one point he were about twenty and oh, 19 of them. He put on stretchers. He were putting people to kip. At one point, I went to a few of his fights as well back in the day. He, yeah. he were icing people. Hey, listen, he bust Nazim Ahmed's nose in sparring. But Naz is small. I'm not bothered, mate. They only do body sparring up there, don't they? And Clifton let one good in it, hitting straight in the face, mate. And the way I'm after. 
Tom Clifton, top man. I like him. Uh, D Dillian White, this is, you know, box wreck. I don't know about box wreck anymore, Terry. Dillian White's pound for pound is number 17 in the world for across the board. They've got that wrong, haven't they? Um, well, who's he in front of? Well, there's 18 weight divisions for a start. And if you've got four champions in each division, that means you've got 72 world champions. Dylan, so, so there's 72 world champions out there, or 72 belts. Dylan's not got one of them belts and stepped down to European. He ain't got one of them, not even fought for one. He's got a vacant British, but he's pound for pound number 17 on Box Trek. So, Box Trek, you don't know what you're doing. I've unsubbed. But isn't that based on scores? Aren't you just round basing your score? Um, well, what, what's his score for his last fight? I don't know. I don't, I don't know but... death, isn't it? Every fight he's been in is life and death. Yeah, but I look, I don't know. I thought Boxwick did it on numbers, and that's why can't people be doing it. Score, the system, the, their system's no good then, isn't it? Dylan White's not <laughs> number 17 pound for pound. There's 18. <laughs> Get a grip of yourself, box wreck. And I've been a box wreck man years. All box wreck is any good for now is telling you what fights are on. Forget all that pound for pound. I've stopped looking at it now. And also the new format's horrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, on box wreck. On, yeah, it is. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Big Meech and Usek, a week to go. Really? Well, a week till fight week, isn't it? It's a week tomorrow, and then that's fight week, isn't it? That's come around quick. Oh, it's 8th tomorrow. 8th of the 8th. It's uh, Wow, that's come around quick. Kev's sister's birthday tomorrow, I think. Yeah, 8th for 8th, so many. Yeah, so it's 8th tomorrow. Or is it 8th today? 8th tomorrow, 8th tomorrow. So 9th Monday. Oh, no, hang on. 9th Monday, 16th. Yeah, it's week, fight weeks. Week tomorrow for Joshua Rusek. Fight week. So, um, but yeah, nobody, nobody's mentioned, no, yeah, I don't even know, looking at me telling you that it's happening this fight, you. <laughs> I think you'll see a lot, you'll see a lot more, they'll, they'll start putting their back into it from tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, or, can you... And you'll see bits of it in the football today. Yeah, do you think it might not happen? I know it will happen, otherwise that means Joshua hasn't fought this year. Everyone needs, everyone needs their pound of flesh, Joshua will fight. Did you see Liverpool Fulham game? Mate, Anderson. top out. Hey, listen, Anderson. Hey, what do you reckon to that? Uh, Nunes and Diaz, they're players, them, aren't they? Whew. Yeah, yeah. They, listen, Liverpool have done well in the transfer market. You know, I, I'm not really a Liverpool fan, but I'll give it to them. That they that front three is frightening. Yeah, Salah, Nunes and Diaz. What about Anderson, 25-yarder at end of game, crossbar? That was a bad look, wasn't it? Nah, standard Henderson, man. He missed the target. Don't you rate him? Nah. I think he's all right, him, Henderson. He's company, man. Nah. He's got yeah, well, Marvel written all over him like Robbo, hasn't he? What other team would he play in? Coventry City. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't get in the City team, would he? Wouldn't get in the Chelsea team. He's all right. get in the Arsenal team. You need players like that, though, because, you know, like your Nobby Styles types. You need players yeah. Like, you have George Best in every position, or you're not winning out, would you? You, yeah, know what I mean? you know, you're like your David Batty types, Remy Moe. He'd be, hey, he'd be worth millions now. In this modern era, he'd be worth millions. Bobby Styles. Nah, David Batty be worth yeah, millions. Would Remy Moses be worth a Norman Whiteside and Robbo in midfield free for Big Ron? They'd be a, that'd be a right midfield, wouldn't it, that? Yeah, imagine Porky Russ is like a number 10. I read, I read some other day in the magazine, isn't it? Like, what? In the hole. <laughs> in solitary <laughs> confinement, more like. I read some other day this quote from Alex Ferguson. He, he's, they're asking him about Gaza. And uh, they said, Oh, you, you get Fergie, uh, did you sign Gaza? He said, I thought I had. I spoke to him. He said, I wanted to sign him after a, he, Newcastle played Man United. He says, I sent uh, Remy Moses, Robson, and Whiteside out against Gascoigne. And you know the story, don't you? He turned, turned them on his head, didn't he? Yeah, he was bullied. He, also, he did all sorts to them, and then he was tapping them on, uh, doing tricks with balls and what. Anyway, he got man at match, didn't he? And that, and anyway, yeah. Brian Robson went in and said, "Look, sign him now." Anyway, they arranged to sign him. He went, "I don't want him, Mister Ferguson. I'm going to sign for you." 
And then look what happened. Old Terry Venables from Essex. Hmm. He, he nipped in, didn't he, and bought Gazza's mum and house, and that went different. And Gazza will regret that to his grave, ain't he? Yeah, 100%. He regret that to his grave. He could have played with Robbo in midfield, couldn't he, at Man U? But I wonder, I wonder if he would have stayed disciplined at United or if they had to get rid of him. Well, I think, like, what Clinton Woods says, if it's in you to not be dedicated, it's in you. Some people just don't want to live their life to be a boxer, do they? Or, or a, an elite footballer. Gazza's an elite footballer, but he could have been Pelly type, couldn't he, if he'd have not really been. Yeah. We're heading towards that, wasn't he? When he t- uh, top three player in world for two or three years, he were up there, wasn't he? You know what? About, here's what I do say about Gaza, and then th- this is where your comments are going to go into meltdown, Porky. Oh, yeah. If we give Collymore a hard time for slapping Ulrika, why don't we give Gaza a hard time for beating up his wife? Why did he beat up his miss? I don't think he had a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was all in the media. Cheryl Gascoigne came out. I, I, I don't want to go any further than that. There may have been other things he did to her, but definitely oh, that was domestic Bruno. abuse. Frank Bruno, they don't say all about him, do they? Yeah. You know what I mean? We all know about Frank Bruno's. I don't mind saying it on my channel because it's true. He got, didn't she get a molestation? A molestation doesn't mean he's a sexual assault. What a molestation or the, or the means when you're married is. For example, if you've just got a girlfriend in your house, you can't just go up to her and touch her or do what you want. When you're married, you can, can't you? And they were yeah. living in the same house getting a divorce and she said she didn't want him touching her so she, she served it on him, didn't she? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what had gone on, but... Somebody did say in this this club, come somebody come out with a joke, and I didn't know if it was true or what. This is a few years ago, and they said that every time she were washing pots or cooking something in the kitchen, Frank would go in the kitchen and he'd be behind her. So it might it might have been that he might be trying, trying to get into her. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, Gaza, and well, look at Prince Charles. You know, we had him up on a pedal still, didn't we, Terry? What happened to him? Oof. Hey? He, yeah. He ring in Camilla and they were talking about all sorts of filth and then he went to News at World. The Squidgy Gate tapes. Or were it? I forget what it was. Yeah. Listen, mate, This the media in this country are controlled by government, mate. Trust me. I think that's about it, really. Uh, I just want to talk about the... The punditry, do you think it might be, I don't know, the sky lot? This, uh, sorry, that does own lot. I had a little look this morning. They uh, seem to be doing a bit better than they were, don't they? Do you think? No. No? No. Oh, you, no. Oh, yeah, do you earn a bit of credit? Oh, no, yeah, you're probably right, Terry. It's a lot of crap, aren't you? No. Mate, mate, the, the, I'm telling you now, all these pundits, the only person who stepped up in the last year is Johnny Nelson, mate. Johnny Nelson is. Johnny Nelson, what? Pound for pound number one. Pound for pound number one. Yeah, in terms of punditry. You reckon, you old man? Johnny mate, Nelson. mate, oh, mate. Sorry, no, 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 no. Listen. No, no, no. Think oh, about this. No, no, no. Think about this, Russ. Who made Usyk trend in the last two weeks? Johnny Nelson. Where's Usyk going to be fighting on August 20th? Sky. Johnny does his job better than anyone else. Like, Johnny can say something, and in an hour, there's 2,000 tweets about it. What, you reckon he's just saying these mad, absurd things just to get views? And I don't know if he's saying no, I don't know if he's saying it just for views, but having him on your team means that, mate, he can control Twitter. So credit where credit's due. He knows how the game works. Yeah, okay. What do you think about Joe Gallagher getting stick for putting Butler in with you? I know you. I know you. I like I that. You, That's right. how we're going to call it now. I can't spell out, can I? Mate? I'm thick, aren't I? I know you. Or Beater Beaver. <laughs> mate, oh, um, well, Paul Butler's not going to beat in way, but hopefully Paul Butler will get a payday he wouldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. But sometimes you've got to look at it from that perspective. Mm. I mean, is it any different to Eddie Rowling Dice? We He's uh, Eodare's comments with Gavin Reese Broner. When I mean, Broner went on to win four world titles at four different weights, didn't he? At one point, yeah. Look, and Gavin Reese seems to have a comfortable life, and that's yeah. what we care about. Where we care about these guys being able to retire and not have to worry about mortgage, all right? Uh, 
Yeah, and I mean, there were other fights as well. Paul Smith went in with Ward, didn't he? And just put, he came in at 177, didn't he? Do you remember the story about that? I don't know the story about that. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, when, when, when Tiffany saw how much Smith was getting paid by Matchroom, it was like, no, 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 no. Give him his fine back. And Ward gave him the fine back. Ward gave it fine back, yeah. 60 grand, I think it was, wasn't it, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because of course Smith was that badly paid 10%, for the fight. 10%, wasn't it, of his purse or something. I don't know. I, I, I'd have to ask. I, I, yes. Don't quote me on that at 60, but I think it's 10%, isn't it? If it, it were way over. And to be fair to yeah. Paul Smith, he went in and seen Ward after and said, look, you know, I just want to put my kid through school and I'll pay my bills and that. And Ward took pity on him, didn't he? So you have to give Ward credit, don't you? Well, well, but how long have I been saying this, Porky? I don't remember. I don't. I don't. I don't remember your best friend putting money in people's pockets. Oh, Carl Froch. Yeah. What are you on about? What? Because listen, mate. If Ward who just signed a forty million deal with Jay Z wants to give Paul Smith a few quid back, who he's just bashed up, and people mm -hmm. cameras in his face, and he's going on about, well, I just want to feed my family. Of course, he's going to give it back, and he got blagged by a scouser, mate. You'd never see Ward arguing about onion rings, would you? Battered onion rings. Well, that story's not true because I've asked him. So, <laughs> oh, I said, "What's all this about onion rings? It's a load of rubbish." It's a load of rubbish. Did he pay for the onion rings? A load of rubbish spread by Ty and Booth. <laughs> Who's making a comeback? I've heard. Jesus. Hey, what? Why can't him and Froch have a fight? Yeah, get, get him at it. Get him at it on a white collar. It'd be a good one, it. Oh, I'd watch that. I would watch that. Who do you think wins? I'm sure that uh, if he bumps into Carl Fox in Nottingham, they'll uh, they'll find a like, nice little car park. I'm sure that'll happen. I think from what I'm hearing, Frotch is one that doesn't want to bump into Ty and Boo. Whatever. No, you're needing shit, Terry. Change subject now. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm hearing... No, listen, cause... Terry, you need to stop slagging him off, because one day Never. he'll take you to his house, and then we'll let him go. Oh, please do. Oh, please. Terry, if I took you there, you'd be a fucking fanboy. No, I wouldn't. I'd be that. I'd, I'd, I'd kick that. What's that putting green he's got in his garden? I'd kick that I'm up. Going there next week or week after to get some gloves signed for a kid. I'm at, Are you? Uh, I've got to take Max on that because he's been stressing me. You might see me there. Can't take Max, Max in my car. Hang on a sec. Who is it? Dennis? Yeah. Just say I'm all right. Just say me help all right. <laughs> Terry run me last week, Dennis, didn't he? Um, Time to put the band back together. Fights then ain't working without us. I'm waiting, aren't I? So he's not in my phone, is he, Dennis? I blocked him. Yeah, that's what you got to say to them, then. Nice, it's Fight. nice of him to, uh, to, to, uh, to ask. Yeah, because I'm yeah. really struggling at the moment, aren't I? Hey, listen, yeah. I'm brown bread in six months. I'm waiting to piss in as many pint pots as you can at matchroom shows and just lob it on Eddie when he walks by. Promise me you'll do that, Terry, and I'll sleep happily in hell. <laughs> Your piss or my piss? I'll, go, I'll save loads up for you, shall I? It'll all be like great fucking dark yellowy green like it is at the moment. <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah, just get in them like water balloons as well so when it lands, it just detonates. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okie dokie then. Well, listen, you take care. Uh, All right, mate. Uh, have a good day. What you got on today? Hey, I'm going to try and catch as much of this Commonwealth Games boxing as I can. Not been impressed with the standard overall, but there is some good, some good fights, though. Yeah. This kid, Amy Broadhurst, is special. Yeah. That, that's, she's the definition of special, actually. I'd like to see her turn over this year. Um, I think she's a menace for anyone, even Katie Taylor. She's an absolute nightmare. Do you think? Um, Why well, didn't you say yeah. something about Ellie Scott, you know, Terry? At different levels here. You're talking about Amy Broadhurst, who's multiple European gold medals, European junior gold medalist, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, Commonwealth Wealth. Had it not been for Kelly Harrington, Amy Broadhurst would have probably won the gold at Tokyo last year. She's, yes, yeah, there are levels to this. And in terms of Ellie Scott, Lee, you're still mad, but I'm like, well, Ellie Scott is 23 years old, Porky. Is that all she is? 23 years old, started boxing at 17. You know, she's learning. Yeah, I know you, you had on pads. When? On pads. Is that that girl you took on pads? 
Uh, no, no, that's, no, that's young Sydney. Yeah, Sid, Sid doesn't box anymore now. She's she's pursuing a career as a fitness trainer. Yeah. Well, they all do, don't they? After that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, so I'll be watching the Commonwealth Games. Just see if there, there are any nuggets of, of gold in there. Um, yeah, from a GB perspective, we're not strong in this generation. So, oof, good luck to us. Because yeah. first two fights I saw, girl Jem, Demi Jade lost at minimum weight. Then this kid, Kieran McDonald from Sunderland, lost. Yeah, he got beaten up, mate. Got battered. Who's the best one out of all these Commonwealth ones? Who's the, who's the star? <laughs> For me, it's Amy Broadhurst. I think she's head and shoulders above him. About the else. men as well, Terry. Ah, oh, mate, <laughs> that's how bad it is for the men. Uh, so they're in a good crop coming through now. Ah, uh, there's a kid, a Scottish kid. Is it Sam Hickey? He's boxing in the final today. Uh, might be boxing at seventy-five. Sam Hickey, he looked good. He beat Lewis Williams, whatever his name was. He beat him, which was impressive. So yeah, Sam Hickey for me is a Scottish kid. Um, Literally not come out of nowhere, but has come out of nowhere. He's looking impressive. And then there's a there's there's a Ghanaian kid, uh Komi. He looked good as well. But yeah, apart from that, it's just been a hard one to get excited about. Rosie Eccles done well today as well, actually. Give her credit. Yeah. Mm. Richard Towers is out, they will tell you. Hey, I might text him, man. I miss that guy. Yeah, he's out. He got uh he got a bound over or something. I don't know. He did well. He had a he like he won lottery from what I've heard, but that's good, isn't it? If he's not in, not in there, he's done his he's done a lot of jail, hasn't he? So. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad to have him back out and about. Mm, he'll be. Uh, I'm hoping. I don't know if he's training cash now. I'll, I'll find out tomorrow. You yeah. can train him. Oh, yeah. What am I gonna do? He can't even walk at the moment, hardly. <laughs> Mate, we'll get you a chair. You chair. just do the pads with the chair. White rhino's coming back. Well, he's got, he's got a new mouth to feed, so yeah. He shouldn't need a mouth to feed, though, to come back, should he? He should have been doing it years ago, shouldn't he? Doing, getting it in the hard road. <laughs> Mate, you still have these dreams that he's going to be like a world champion one day. He's, he's done. Well, you know, you know somebody, I lived at back of me. I always used to watch him. I'd watch him walk by, or if it odd time, he might be running. I think, can he win a world title? Yeah. I don't know, because he's a big lump, isn't he? Six, three and a half, isn't he? Big old shovel hands on him. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't oh, six, three. He uh, is not six, it was three. The thing. It, well, it, that's what it says on box. I think he must be good because Jason Cunningham comes upon the train, gets off the back of my house and, and walks the step each year. And Dave used to get ferried, ferried three times a day and brought back. So I kept thinking, well, he must be good. And he must have been all right. Dennis had him. He left Dennis's after seven fights when he figured him. And I don't know what happened to him, whether in changing trainers all the time or having a bit of depression and gambling I think you put it all into melting pot and I think it might have affected him you know moving forward mentally hey, lack of discipline you right. can't you can't do the sport without discipline and everybody in your ear Dave you need to be doing this Dave you need to be doing that I hope he does something in the sport because I don't like wasted talent but leopards don't change the spots do they Terry so we're going to see aren't we and pigs don't change their snouts either they don't mate unless they're snorting good bits <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Oh, right. I'm. Uh, All right, fam. I'm gonna get off. But listen, thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. for coming on the channel today, Terry. I hope you well. Yeah, no worries, mate. You go. You go home. All right, yeah. Uh, last night, yeah, it was all right. I'll let right. take you. Shit. Uh, Two hours. hours. What is it with you and Rico? You love them trains, don't you? <laughs> Now, I didn't even, mate, I didn't even get a train. I got a coach because I just, I needed to get some food. I just saw this coach eating and just gave me a chance to have a nap as well. I needed one. Go on, lad. All right. <laughs> All right yeah, Terry. And, uh, Take care, Russ. Have a good weekend. What's left of it? You too, mate. All right, bye. Well, that was Terry. Uh, oh, we enjoyed the video. Do apologise for swearing. I'm a bit pissed off lately. Boxing just sends you crazy, doesn't it? I don't like to see people not getting pain and stuff like that. I've, I won't be able to handle anything like that. I always have to see things to death. People rip me off or to have to do something about it, don't you? I don't believe in lawyers, uh, but I'm not allowed in America. So if you're my son, I won't be able to strangle Don King, would I? So that Daniel DeVar's dad, I can feel his pain. It's not nice, is it? Cheeses me off, pisses me off.
you know, I've just wasted an hour of my life here we're in and out again. <laughs> no problem. Oh, I think that's about it. Peace out.